for Jay and Simone in her usual chair over there on the other side of the glass. Joining us now on the Folsom Lake Honda Hotline, Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Senior writer for Up Rocks to talk some NBA. Pleasure to welcome in Robbie Callen. Robbie, how are you this afternoon, my man? I'm good, guys. How are y'all? Good. If, good. if I told you, now put the theatrics of Jimmy Butler and, and, and the way that we've gotten where we are. If I just told you, I didn't tell you how, but I just said the Lakers and the Celtics are both down 0-3 in the conference finals after you woke up from a two-week coma. Which would you be more surprised by? Uh, the Celtics. Mm. For sure. Why? Like, well, I mean, like, I, I think if I, I would have been like, all right, well, the Lakers – making the conference finals would have been like a mild surprise. I think, you know, um, not shocked that they would have been in that position, but given what they've done this year, I don't think you would have been surprised if they got to the, to the conference finals and ran into a Denver uh, or even, you know, a Phoenix, even if, if they had, you know, everybody healthy and, and working, like I wouldn't have been shocked if the Lakers had found themselves down Oh three, especially the way that they have, uh, it's been mostly close games that they just kind of can't quite get over the hump. And it, it's, mm-hmm. it's a matter of depth and not having it. The Celtics being down 0-3 uh, would have been fairly shocking, even if they were facing Milwaukee. Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't think anybody would have expected Boston to come in uh, and, and lay this many eggs in the postseason. Considering we talked about how much depth they had, they added to the depth. They added Malcolm Brogdon this offseason, and that was supposed to – be one of the missing pieces we talked about last year in the finals so much of like they need a point guard who can settle them down and get them in the offense and they still apparently don't have that and can't do that despite having Brogdon and White uh, on top of Marcus Smart so I I think unquestionably I'd be more surprised uh, to learn the Celtics are down 0-3 especially with the way game three played out like that was um it really was stunning to see them just completely, <laughs> right. completely quit. Like, you know, like this is a team that made the finals, this is a team that's been in this position four out of five years, you know, I mean, like this is not a team that's new to this and just to, to see them roll over in the third quarter. Uh, I, I never would have thought that would happen. Robbie, I know you don't have the answer. I, I quite frankly, I don't think anyone has the answer, but begin to explain why do you think the Celtics are so violently up and down in their play? And is it on the coach for you or more on the players this time around? I think a lot of it's on the players. Cause mm. again, these are guys who have been here. This is not a team that should need to be told what to do in the conference finals. Like I said, they've been there four out of five years. They know how the playoff rhythm is. They know that every other day games they've, they've been in this situation. They've, they've played well in previous years this year they just it's on it's on jason tatum it's on jalen brown i mean jalen brown's been awful this series yeah. uh particularly as a pick and roll ball hander this was an issue last year in the finals um where his handle got exposed by ball pressure uh and the heat have been doing that to him a lot uh he you know he he has an issue where he'll it, that handle gets loose uh when he's playing as the pick and roll ball hander. i think the synergy i think he's at they're averaging like under 0.7 points per possession Mm. when he is the pick and roll ball handler, which is like fifth percentile. Like that can't happen uh, when he's one of the two guys who can initiate offense for you. Uh, Tatum hasn't been a whole lot better. He's just been kind of like running the mill bad. Um, But it's, it's to me, it starts with those two. uh, And something that I've found interesting is just the lack of trust on this team that's been together for so long, right? Like you watch them play and it's the heat who are the team that everybody seems to believe in everybody else. And the Celtics team just doesn't have that. The stars don't believe that they can make the right pass and that it's going to get paid off in the right way. Uh, And you see that in these big moments in the third and fourth quarter, when Miami starts making a run, Boston can't string together one, the stops, which is fairly surprising because they should have the defensive talent to, and two, they can't string together buckets to keep up. I you can't say he looks old because for LeBron to do what he's done in in his age 38 season 20 years into the league is is remarkable but in this series have you seen signs of age that 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 he is human and and it is starting to catch up to him yeah I mean we don't know what's going on exactly with that foot I mean remember it was what he had to go find the one doctor to tell him he didn't need surgery the LeBron (laughs) James of feet or whatever um (laughs) Yeah, I mean, so we don't know what's going on with the foot. We don't know what's going on with the age thing. 
I think in uh, game three, he took three shots in the restricted area for the whole game. When was the last time LeBron in a game that's being officiated the way that game was? Remember, yeah. they had everybody in foul trouble. A- AD had Jokic in foul trouble. They, you know, he sat the last eight minutes of the third quarter. Uh, a bunch of guys, you know, Bruce Brown was, you know, three, four fouls early on. A bunch of guys in foul trouble, and LeBron is is taking, a, I think he took 11 shots from 20 plus feet away from the rim and three at the rim. Something's not right. Like that's not a, that's not a LeBron performance in a spot where he knows they have to win um, that where you've seen. And I don't know what it is. It could be that he's just getting up there. It could be the foot. It could be all kinds of things, but it is kind of, kind of surprising to see him like that and, and playing that way. Um, you know, it's especially because the, you know, it's not like the jumpers falling for him. It's not like he's just shooting cause he's hot. Like he finally made a three, but it's not, it's just weird to watch. And uh, the Lakers just don't have a margin for error, especially if he's going to play like that. Joined by Robbie Callen, senior writer for Up Rocks. Robbie, I'm, I'm going to shift gear a little bit because we heard the announcement from Carmelo Anthony today. Carmelo Anthony, his career, how will you remember him? One of the best scorers of his generation, one of the, one of the most dynamic um, forwards that we saw in, in the 20 years he was in the league. Um, and I think something that, that I'll also remember is, I mean, this is a guy who he didn't win an NBA championship, but he did win at pretty much every other level. He's got three Mm -hmm. Olympic, Olympic gold medals. And he was the guy on a couple of those, like Olympic mellow was a thing. I think that's something to remember, (laughs) Right? you know, like that was the whole thing. Everybody (laughs) always used to say like, Oh, like if a team can get him to play that style, like if he played with another star, that was what OKC was hoping for. Remember right? when OKC brought him in, they're like, we're going to try to get Olympic mellow because it was coming off 16. Um, everybody's like, all right, we're going to put him with, with PG and Russ, and this is going to work. And it just, he never could do it. He could never necessarily take on that role in the NBA, but he was great in the Olympics. Obviously at Syracuse, uh, the one year he was there leading them to a title, he's a hall of famer. Um, and you know, he was the guy that brought New York basketball back after a while. And I, Mm. you know, he, it, it didn't necessarily become what they wanted it to be, but that also, I mean, he was on some teams that weren't the best, but the the late late in Denver, he was phenomenal, and early in New York, he was he was so good. I mean, he was genuinely one of the one of the five ten best guys in the league, and I, I you know he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, and it, I'm actually most glad that the way it ended that he was able to kind of go off on his own note because it got ugly there with the Houston situation, and there was a chance that he just was going to get pushed out of the league before he was ready and, and seeing his, his statement, I think it was good that he got those years in Portland and that year in LA where he kind of could show like, I can still do this. I can accept that secondary role. And while he didn't go off right off in the sunset, off the court, he took a year off. I think it was, he finally recognized and kind of was at peace with it in a way that he definitely wasn't coming off that Houston season. Yeah, let me uh yeah. bring it back home to Sacramento before we let you go. Robbie Callen of yep. Up Rocks, our guest here. Let's just assume, let's make the leap that the Denver Nuggets are going to the finals and say they're the class of the Western Conference. Mm-hmm. How how many steps, how far behind the Nuggets do you think the Kings are? And what would you say they need to get there? I, I'd say they're probably a couple steps behind. And, and I think the biggest thing that they have to do, and this is something you can look at what Denver did last offseason, and it's maybe an offseason away for, for Sacramento because I still think they need to figure out exactly what their core is. That's the first step. Um, they have to figure out and, and that's going to come down to playoff reps. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we saw guys that, that we thought, you know, Kevin Herter struggled, Keegan Murray struggled first time really, uh, for him and, and, and Herter had been in, in playoff situations. So it was a little bit of a surprise to see him shoot as poorly as he did. Um, but they got to figure out who's the core beyond Fox and Sabonis and, and who can be in that. And then you got to fill out the role player positions with playoff depth and I think that's the thing that we've seen Denver do this year they kind of sacrifice some regular season depth they move on from Monty Morris and Will Barton to bring in KCP who has been phenomenal uh you had Bruce Brown who looks like the steal of the offseason from last year and for Sacramento it comes down to one building a place where you can get guys like those to come in like you got to build a place where the Bruce Browns of the world are, are willing to go and say, this is a place where I can one thrive and two win. And they're on the way, but it's still probably a couple off seasons away from 
from guys fully buying in uh, on coming to Sacramento as free agents. And part of that is, and the first part of that's figuring out who the core is that can be your playoff core. And, and it took some time for Denver. Remember, Gary Harris was initially part of that core. Monty Morris yeah. was part of that core. Will Barton was part of that core. And they kind of had to figure out those guys don't have it. And so that's the part that, that Sacramento is now in the process of the next couple of years is keep making the playoffs and then figure out who can be that guy, who can take the steps forward, who doesn't take the steps forward. And we need to, we need to figure out how to replace with playoff uh, proven caliber guys. Boy, Robbie, you were spitting right there. I'm glad you said that because that sounds like <laughs> me. I keep saying that, man. Let's not pin ourselves to every person that's in the King's uniform. I like it, Robbie. That's Robbie Callen. Check out his work covering the NBA over at uprocks.com and our guest for the last few minutes on the Folsom Lake Honda Hotline. Appreciate the time, Robbie. Thanks for having me anytime, fellas. And uh, Folsom Lake Honda is your one-stop Honda shop. He was gassing cats, man. Yes, he was. I mean... I- I'm I almost heard you throw out a hallelujah and an amen as I he was talking. I almost did it. Preach. Chat. <laughs> I almost 